When I first start, started flying in the 60s, it was very romantic. We wore suits and ties, and I flew on the, on the Concorde from London to New York, I mean, three hours and 15 minutes, going 1,300 miles an hour, sipping on a Grand Cru Montrachet and nibbling on lobster claws and beef tips. You know, that's, that's a ride. Well, I mean, we've probably been doing the feature thing for as long as we've been around. I remember being five and watching the Jetsons and thinking, this is going to be awesome. I probably read too much science fiction as a kid. In the last century, science fiction promised us some pretty cool forms of mobility. And a brave group of innovators have tried to turn these visions of the future into reality with varying results. If anything should go wrong, how'd you get down? I mean, is there a parachute harness of any kind? No, we rely on gravity. <laughs> but these same pioneers paved the way for radical changes in transportation and making what we're actually going to get even better. But how will we be moving around in that future? Well, I tell you, I, I don't think we're going to be beaming people up and down. And I don't think we're going to travel at warp seven. But we have communicators now. I have a communicator. Oh, it's in my car. <laughs> we all have communicators now. <laughs> the whole the jetpack concept? I don't think that's ever happening. <laughs> you don't see many of them, OK? Because it's somewhat not practical. <laughs> well, now this gets into flying cars. There's several models of experimental flying cars. They never have come to market. You know, the wings came off and you stored them in your garage. Trust that to your local, you know, guy down the street to put his wings on right. It's, it's a nightmare. So as much as these guys want to go out and say, I'm going to build a flying car, it's like, it will never, ever, I mean, can you picture Manhattan? Manhattan's, you know, you have 25,000 flying around. You simply can't do it. We have fun imagining the future, but predicting things accurately has proven to be more challenging because the future we usually get is the one we least expect. I think the innovation that's happened in the past 20 years isn't what anyone would have anticipated. I think it's very easy to know what's going to happen in the next six months because you know mostly what's going to be possible, and the question is how can you push it? And five years out, it starts to be, you know, maybe you'll get it exactly right or maybe you'll be really far off track. As designers, in our minds, uh, it's not about prediction of future, but creation of future, right? So we're an active partner in that. My particular bent is to render an optimistic future because we're rehearsing for our own future. Why not do it as pleasantly as possible? So the way we're going to be moving around is tough to predict. And while we've made some mistakes in the past, there have been times when we've taken on the impossible and surprised even ourselves. It's an exciting time right now in space because, you know, we're right at the cusp of this fundamental shift in space transportation. What we aspire to do is orbital space flight, even point to point space flight, so that, you know, instead of just going uh, straight up and straight down, you know, you take off. Uh, here in Los Angeles, and you go to Sydney, Australia in an hour. Low Earth orbit travel is going to change our opinion of what's a long ways to go. Uh, it takes me 22 hours to get from Boston out to uh, Wellington, New Zealand. I want it to take six. Can you imagine how much smaller the world will be when that happens? It took us 66 years to go from Wright Brothers to Tranquility Base. Well, what happens in the next 66 years? Probably what comes next is that tourist trip to Saturn or that tourist trip to Mars. Go down to the surface, plant a flower, see if it grows. I mean, that's the kind of beautiful moment that I think the next 10 to 20 years will hold. The car and the airplane are roughly the same age. But while air travel has progressed from a 12-second flight over Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, to a 240,000-mile journey to the moon, our ground transportation is yet to make the same breakthroughs. Our vehicles are more comfortable and efficient than ever, but is that enough to meet the needs of our future? We're redesigning the way that we live on Earth, and that takes a little bit, because we have to get that change to happen. And, you know, design's about parameters, and cars just haven't had the forces put on them to require the big changes. 
You know, there's not too many products that you can identify that have had this same fundamental genetic makeup for over 120 years. And so we are in a transition into a sustainable lifestyle. That's not a bad thing. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. It's just different. We're entering into a future now of a whole new DNA for the automobile a way of thinking about the car and how it fits into our lives, along with the enormous communications technology that we have to help us live our lives in, in even better ways. Now that's mobility, right? That's transportation. And we have new generations coming along and, and things are rapidly increasing. And it's time now to move on.